Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries in regards to the Martian meteorites. The various types of rocks that have been discovered here on Earth that definitively came from Mars, eventually falling onto the surface of planet Earth. Now presently, approximately 300 various rocks have been classified as the Martian meteorites, and many of them have extremely similar composition to one another, which suggested to the scientists that maybe these rocks came from a very similar source. And we're not just talking about Mars as a source, we're talking about a very specific event that happened on Mars sometime in the last few millions of years that actually created all of these meteorites that are now slowly falling back to planet Earth. And turns out that after a very thorough analysis and actually an extremely brilliant technique, the scientists whose paper you can find in the description below discovered the most likely source of a lot of these meteorites, a specific crater on the surface of Mars where probably most of these rocks came from. So let's talk a little bit more about this particular study and how all of this was discovered and what all of this means for our understanding of how these rocks make it to planet Earth. So first of all, in terms of actual numbers, over 70,000 different asteroids have been discovered to date, but the vast majority of them are actually not really classified at all. They most likely came from the various regions of the asteroid belt, but nobody really knows their true origin. But a very, very tiny proportion of all of these asteroids came from Mars, nearly 300 of them. With this one right here being one of the most famous samples, mostly because it was the reason for the Bill Clinton's announcement back in the 90s that we might have discovered life on Mars. This was of course incorrect. Generally though, a lot of Martian meteorites can be classified into one of five groups. But there are only three major groups that are quite well defined. So in this particular case, we're actually not going to be talking about the so-called Naclites or the Chassignites, mostly because they represent a very small portion of all of the asteroids. And that's because the vast majority of all of the Martian meteorites are known as the Shergutites, with a typical Shergutite resembling something like this. And the name itself is from this meteorite discovered back in 1865, named after the region in India where it was originally discovered. And these meteorites are very, very intriguing and somewhat unique. First of all, they're extremely young, at least when it comes to rocks. Compared to a lot of other minerals on planet Earth and even on Mars, the Shergati meteorites for some reason are only approximately 180 million years old. And that's actually extremely young considering the fact that we believe that Mars, or at least Martian surface, is probably billions of years old. A lot of things here haven't really been affected by anything for a very, very long time. And so even though we know that Mars was pretty active volcanically, a lot of this has stopped billions of years ago. So all of these really large volcanoes you see on the surface, they haven't really changed for a pretty long time. And so the existence of these 180 million year old rocks is a bit of a mystery. And this mystery has a scientific name. It's known as the Shergutite Age Paradox, something that the scientists for the past few decades have actually not been able to resolve just yet. And so to try to resolve some of these mysteries, including the mysteries of Martian surface and the origin of some of these asteroids and meteorites, the scientists really wanted to find out where exactly some of these meteorites came from in order to understand how they were created and what type of a terrain they most likely originated from. And so some of the scientists initially believed that maybe a lot of this came from this relatively well-known crater, the one you can kind of see right here, the 58 kilometer in diameter crater known as the Mojave. But because of its location, it wasn't entirely clear how these young rocks could have come from here, and more specifically, if this was even the right crater. At this point, this was really just guesswork. Now, in case you're wondering, the reason the scientists believe it was actually a crater is really because of the way that a lot of this is generated. So when a relatively large asteroid strikes the surface of any planet, including of course Mars, it's going to end up producing a lot of debris, as you can see right here, that flies all across the solar system. And a lot of this will eventually end up on planets like Earth. And so this right here is basically the creation story for a lot of these asteroids and a lot of these meteorites. But naturally, Mars has a lot of different craters. So choosing just one based on the size or based on the age is not really scientifically accurate. There are way, way better statistical techniques to try to figure all of this out. And so in order to analyze tens of millions of craters on the surface of Mars, the scientists obviously used a computer. And specifically, they used machine learning. By using the data of 90 million different craters on the surface, they created what they referred to as the crater detection algorithm. The algorithm whose purpose was to analyze the overall density of craters 
and specifically focusing on the types of craters where the debris would actually reach the velocity needed to escape the planet and thus land on planet Earth. But they also wanted to find something that was not too old, something that was actually created relatively recently. And that's of course mostly because some of the asteroids we get from Mars are not very old at all, they're only a few million years old. And so here they were only looking for craters approximately 3 or more kilometers across, because these are the only collisions where the actual velocity of debris would be fast enough to then potentially reach planet Earth. But how do you establish the actual age, or specifically the youth, of a typical crater? And that's where they used an extremely brilliant analysis. They focused on so-called secondary debris or secondary collisions. And let's use Universe Sandbox right here to try to simulate how all of this works. And so following the initial primary collision that's about to occur on the surface of Mars, we're going to have a lot of debris traveling everywhere. But some of this debris will most likely end up back on the planet. You'll actually see a kind of a ring of secondary debris forming right here around the primary crater. So all of these secondary craters, these are really important in determining the youth of a crater. And mostly because secondary debris does not last very long. The secondary craters will normally disappear within about 50 million years. And so by discovering a variety of different secondary craters, and by then trying to trace where they initially came from, it becomes possible to locate the original source or the original crater that created a lot of the secondary craters. And if the secondary craters are still around, it means that this crater is also relatively young. It's less than 50 million years old. And because today we know that Shergatites are usually around 1.1 to maybe 1.5 million years old, it means that we're looking for an extremely young crater. And of all of the 90 million craters analyzed, only some of them met all of the parameters required to determine the origin of these meteorites. In this image right here, they show all of these craters with a diamond on the surface of Mars. But only one of these craters seemed to be the most likely candidate. It's this crater right here, known as the Tutin Crater, named after one of the suburbs in London. So this particular crater seems to be the most likely candidate. It's approximately 1 million years old, it's about 28 kilometers across, and approximately 1200 meters deep. And it also has quite a lot of secondary debris located on the outskirts. And assuming that the scientists in the paper are correct, and this is where these asteroids came from, it means that a lot of the samples here are extremely young, probably less than 200 million years old. And all of this is located in the extremely well-known region on Mars, known as Tharsis, the volcanic region that also features the biggest volcano in the solar system. This volcano right here known as the Olympus Mons. But the Tutin volcano is right here, is this tiny tiny spot you see on this image, which means that it is pretty close to that volcanic system. And it means that a lot of these rocks were probably created approximately 180 million years ago. Which again means that Mars might have been volcanically active at that time. But it also means that we might not entirely understand how volcanism on Mars works to begin with. Unlike here on planet Earth, where the plate tectonics usually determine where the volcanoes are going to appear, the findings from this study suggest that there is some sort of a very very large thermal anomaly here, or basically some sort of a very large volcanic hotspot, somewhat similar to what we have here on Earth, underneath both Hawaii and Iceland. With the magma from the emissions here building up all of these rocks for billions and billions of years, with some of these volcanic emissions obviously being relatively recent. And so billions of years of eruptions from the plume underneath might have actually created this entire region we have on the surface of Mars, with some of these eruptions being extremely recent in terms of geological times. But how recent was the last eruption is of course a question we cannot answer just yet. Now at the same time, some of these discoveries will also help us understand what's happening inside Mars itself, but more importantly, studies like this highlight the importance of using machine learning in analyzing a lot of data. The only reason the scientists were able to pinpoint the exact location for the origin of a lot of these meteorites was really because of the algorithm used in the study. It would be almost impossible for a human to see these connections simply because there's just way too much data to deal with. And so definitely a pretty interesting discovery, and a discovery that might have created a new mystery. A mystery of the volcanoes on Mars. When exactly did they stop erupting, or more importantly, are they actually going to erupt again? And the implications from the study do suggest that there is maybe a slight chance that they will. 
But anyway, on that note, check out all of the relevant links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.